the time of the Rising, Father John Murphy was about 45 years of age. He was curate in the small village of Boulevard, which consisted then, as it does now, of a handful of cottages grouped around a church and graveyard. Father Murphy was no warmonger, and when the government offered a guarantee of protection to those who handed in their arms, he persuaded his parishioners to choose the path of peace and give up their pikes to the local authorities. But it soon became clear that the offer of protection was only a trick to deprive the people of their arms. The burnings and tortures and murders continued unabated, and Father Murphy's parishioners were so much in fear of their lives that they were afraid to sleep in their houses and used to spend the nights hiding miserably in the fields and ditches. In these straits, the people turned to their priests for advice. Father Murphy no longer felt that he could urge submission or refuse his blessing to those who were determined to defend themselves and their families from the oppressors. If they must die, it was better they should die fighting like men than be slaughtered like sheep. As the month of May drew towards its close, a feeling of tension and expectation could be felt throughout the whole countryside. The land was like a powder barrel awaiting the spark. No one knew where or when it would happen, but everyone knew it couldn't be long delayed. The time was the evening of the 26th of May. The place, the Harrow. On that evening, while one group of cavalry was setting fire to the church in Boulevard, a second group was preparing to burn the houses in the Harrow. They were suddenly confronted by Father John and a band of about 30 men from the locality, and in the ensuing skirmish, their leader and another cavalryman were killed and the rest put to flight. Now that the decisive step had been taken, Father John acted with incredible speed. He immediately led his men southwards, marching all through the night and being joined as he went along by almost every man he met. By Sunday morning, they had taken up position on the summit of Owlert Hill and awaited the attack of the North Cork militia who were known to be in the neighbourhood. How many men did Father Murphy have up here on the top of the hill? I believe he had a thousand. And what sort of armaments would they have had at this stage? Um, about 40 had guns of one kind or another and a number of pikemen. Yeah. And the vast majority had nothing. Yeah. They were all collected there in that field. Uh, this part over here is called the camp field when they saw the militia coming across the brow of um, Ballyboy Hill yes. over there in the distance. And it frightened some of the le the more timorous. Yes. And they retreated back here over the fence, only to find that Hotry Fight was at the back. Yes. So they just came back and joined the crowd. Uh, the North Cork militia came up a laneway, which you have seen in the bottom, known as the North Cork Lane, which led up here to the top of the hill. The pikemen had got behind this fence, and the musketry men were standing out there, about 20 perches out. And when, they came, when the North Corks came within 35 parts of them, they opened fire, fired a volley, but nobody was wounded. As they came closer, they fired another volley. And then they apparently decided to try and outflank the musket men, the, the musket men here by getting over the fence and getting mm. to their back. Mm. And when they got on the fence, they found the, the pikemen behind. And the pikemen, of course, immediately engaged them. The musket men of the rebels turned around and opened fire. Mm. There was a general melee. Uh, they only fired one volley, as far as I can find out, and they charged into them and used their muskets as clubs mm. and laid them low. And they used some of them were only armed with stones. How did the insurgents <laughs> do? Did they have any losses? They had. Uh, there were six altogether lost. Thomas Donovan. The man who fired the first shot at the harrow, he was killed. And there were five others, including a woman. She was supposed to be a weaver down from uh, two or three miles down there to the mm. south. And uh, one poor individual from over here, a place called Kilcotty, who was so poor that he had to wear cast off uh, militia clothes. Mm. And he must have been wounded because he was laying amongst the wounded when a pikeman came on and piked him and dispatched him. He was killed by mistake, but there was, uh, that made a total of six.